Welcome back to our locking automatic chicken coop door build. So we got the base built, the wires are now installed. Now we're going to be moving on to the Arduino code, which actually makes this thing work. Hey, you Wally. Oof. So uh, download the Arduino program and install it on your machine, and then set the um, output to USB and that way you can uh, connect to your Arduino. So I have to say that I bought this Arduino for this project, never have used one before, and started coding. Uh, it took about three weeks of just playing around, trying different things, uh, and then now I know how to use the program. So I think that you'll be just fine. Uh, if it took me three weeks to learn how to even program this thing, um, copying and pasting my code should be uh, quite easy for you. So my code uh, that I'm about to show you will be available for download on my website, landahouse.com, and there will be a link in the description. So let's get started. First of all, go open your Arduino program. This takes a little while to load, so give it a moment. Okay, find the place where you downloaded my chicken coop door code and double click on that. Now you'll notice as you go through here, there are likely some mistakes in spelling on my comments. I have dyslexia, so just ignore those. All this stuff from this point to this point is initializing variables. Uh, oh, and anywhere you see these double slashes, that's just a comment. So you can read what I've got or you can just uh, move straight to the code. So here we're initializing the motor controller. This is pin 10, 9, and 8. And we're just saying that um, these pins are for these values. Down here, light sensor is what's going to be read from analog read AO. Now remember that AO is that orange wire that we installed to the photoresistor. So whatever is read from that is going to be stored in light sensor. Uh, light val is equal to zero. We'll get to that again later. Now remember we have two read switches. So we've got read one pin is uh, set to the pin of two and read two pin is set to the value of 4. And those are um, the actual pins that we used. Now switch state 1 is equal to 0 and switch state 2 is equal to 0 and we'll use those here in just a moment. So those things just happen when the program is first powered on and you don't see them again. Now also we're gonna have void setup. Now this is setting some things up and when the program first gets power I want the door to go to the top in the open position. So that's what we're going to do here in void setup. First of all, we're saying that um, we're turning the ENA and the IN1 and 2 into outputs. Okay. Then we're going to read the values of our read 1 pin, read 2 pin, and place them into switch state. Okay. Now, because we have those values, um, and let's say the door is right in the middle of the two and neither of those are high or activated. So, we're going to head to the if statement. It says if switch state 2 is not high. We just said that it's going to be right in the middle, so it's not high. Okay? Go in here and it says while switch state 2 is not high, make sure you um, enable, or it says the ENA is set to 255. Now what does that mean? The motor controller um, is being run by that PWM pin that we spoke of in the last video and that's the pulse width modulation. So if you imagined a pulse wave that looked kind of like up, over, down, over, up, like that, the distance between those two points would be the pulse width. So in this case, we're saying make it practically a straight line, so fast, in other words. So it just means make the motor go as fast as possible. 
it says um, IN1 is low, IN2 is high. So basically it's saying make the motor go up. Okay. Now it's going to read these pins again because we want to know when is this door reaching the top of its position to be open. So once it hits that, it says, okay, now it's high, stop doing the motor. Fall out, I in one, I in two, low, low, meaning motor off. Okay? Now those things happen every time the power or the program gets power, but after that you don't see it again. So here's the main portion of the program. This void loop. This happens over and over again. Uh, very very quickly just reads 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 so what it's saying is um, check the light sensor what's the value place it in the light valve okay also check the switches again are either one of them high or low whatever it is put it into its appropriate switch state okay now if switch state is high meaning that it's at the top and the light is uh, less than 200, meaning that it's dark outside, go here, um, delay two seconds, and then go into the function of motor down. So if this isn't true, it says else if this low switch is high and it's uh, light outside, wait two seconds, go into motor up. So let's just say that it is um, this first state and we're going into motor down okay so we go into motor down it's going to read those switches again um, and it's going to say if the top if the um, door is at the top and it actually is nighttime wait two seconds now this two second wait um, I'm going to be changing to more like 10 minutes or 30 minutes uh, when I actually have this outside in place and this is going to say make sure it truly is dark outside because what if a bird landed on my sensor and the program thought up oh, it's dark out and started closing the door but in reality it's not dark it's just a bird sitting on it well if that bird flies away within an hour or 30 minutes or whatever you got your time set to it'll say okay no real need to close that door false alarm so we're gonna read again after that time limit and say okay yes it is dark outside we do need to close this door so it's gonna go in here and say while the bottom switch is not high then go in here and say turn the motor on to 255 okay meaning the highest speed, it's going to say turn IN1 high, IN2 low. This is basically saying to the motor, go in this direction, high-low. Okay, read this again, and it's going to say, up, oh, we've got uh, the door is now at the bottom, so it's going to fall out of this while loop. Now it's going to wait one second. Now the reason it's doing this is because the locking mechanism at the bottom needs a little bit of time to engage. So after a second it turns the motor off. And then it goes back up here and does this void loop once again. Now we know it's at the bottom and it's waiting for daylight. So here it is, waits for daylight. Also, I, I mentioned that you're going to be doing this time delay down here. Um, you actually want that to change up here. So this would be like wait uh, 30 minutes, wait, you know, whatever time. So those need to be your higher value. Um, not necessarily this one, because it doesn't really read, doesn't really read the light after that. So it said that it's um, light outside and we're at the bottom, so it's time to go motor up. This is basically the opposite of um, motor down. Read in here, Check the values again. Check them again. Sorry about that. The phone rang. Okay, so where were we? Um, yes, so up here, check the read switches. And then, is it actually light outside? And the um, top one 
is activated. Then read these again, go in here. Yep, it's not at the top yet. Turn on the motor. Read the switches. Once the switch has been triggered, then it falls out of the while loop and says, turn off the motor. Now you'll notice that there is no one second delay here, and that's because you don't need one at the top. So once that's triggered, once again, goes back up here to the uh, the void loop. Where are we? There we are. And it just keeps sitting there. Goes, 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 and it reads the values of daylight, and it reads the value of the switches over and over again. So really what changes things around here is the value of daylight. Once you have your Arduino plugged up into your computer, um, go to Tools, and down here to Port, and make sure it's set to this USB. Once that's happened, you can now upload your code. So the first thing you want to do is push this verify check mark. It's going to run through the code and make sure that everything is compiled and proper. Takes a little while here. Done. Everything is good. Now to get this put onto your Arduino, you're going to press this upload. Okay. Uploading. Done. All right. Now we're ready to go test out the um, program that we've written. That concludes our walkthrough of the code. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, like I said, I spent about three weeks and learned how to program the Arduino. I guarantee there are bunches and bunches of shortcuts I could have taken to make this uh, thing a lot easier. So in the next video, we're going to cover powering these on and a demo of this thing working. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave comments in the comment section below. Um, remember you can get this code on my website and the link to that is also in the description. Please subscribe, thumbs up. I'm Seth Johnson with Land House and I will see you in the next video. Bye.